Um, but, you know, this is, it's interesting that, that Fleer brings up this account. And though he doesn't, at this point in the discussion, uh, talk about a distinction, sort of the root of this problem, I would argue, and now this is an addition to, um, this is an addition to Freire. Freire doesn't say this himself in his text, but in a, in a, in a sense, this problem arises from a, a debate, right? Uh, and this is like, a, the debate is maybe a hundred, no, the debate is like 300 years apart, right? John Locke says the following, right? So Locke, oh, see. Locke says the following, right? Locke says, here I am as an individual, and here is an object in the world, some natural resource, a tree, a well. We'll just say it's an orange tree. Imagine that there's an orange tree. I go, I plant the seed, I water, uh, I water the ground, I, I till the soil, uh, orange tree grows, um, I now own that orange tree, right? Because what I've done is I've mixed my labor. Locke's, Locke's belief is that mixing... Right, Locke believes if I mix my labor, mix my labor with a resource, then what I end up doing is I gain possession, right? I gain possession or ownership. Right? If I mix my labor with a resource, it's Locke's belief that I gain ownership of the resource. So now this ownership, uh, this resource is now mine. It may have been public, but as soon as I mix my resource, my labor with this resource, right? It now becomes mine. So that's the argument. And there's a lot that goes into it. I'm not going to go into a whole Lockean account of uh, ownership and private property in this point, because it's not that important. What is important, however, is this idea of possession, this idea of ownership. Uh, a couple hundred years later, um, contemporary, he's, he's deceased now, but contemporary um, philosopher Robert Nozick, Nozick says the following. He says, well, okay, let's look at that example, right? And this is like Nozick's sort of uh, uh, claim to fame. It's a great, great analogy, right? He says, well, Locke, you believe that if you mix your labor with a resource, that you then, be, you then gain um, ownership of the resource, right? And this is obviously, the reason why I bring this up in a discussion of Freire is that this paradigm governs and dominates the discourse that Freire situates his idea of the oppressor. The oppressor ascribes to this Lockean conception of private property, of ownership, right? If I mix my labor with some natural resource, I now own that resource. You oppress group haven't mixed your labor, or you oppress group don't have the technological advancement or the opportunity to, to be able, or the know-how, um, technological know-how, to be able to mix your labor with a resource so you don't have ownership. We have and you don't have. The reason why we have is because we've mixed our labor and we've acquired. The reason why you don't have, as we'll see later, is because you're lazy and blah, 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 blah. That idea, um, so um, Fier's idea of ownership is indebted to, though he doesn't say it explicitly, is indebted to this Lockean idea of the acquisition of resources through labor. Nozick says just the opposite, right? Nozick says, I have a can of tomato juice and I walk out to... Um, the ocean, and there are the waves uh, uh, coming in, right? The, well, watch the waves ebb and I flow, ebb and flow. And I take my orange, uh, my uh, tomato juice, and I pour my tomato juice into the ocean, right? And there goes all my tomato juice going into the ocean. Insofar as I've poured my tomato juice into the ocean, do I now say that since I've mixed my labor with the ocean, that I've acquired the ocean, the ocean's now mine? No, it's ridiculous, right? Of course I haven't acquired the ocean. What I've done is I've lost my tomato juice, right? <laughs> I've come up short. Um, Nozick's challenge to Locke is sort of flippant, but it's a good point. How is it, Locke, that you mixing your labor with a resource makes that resource yours? I've done another video, um, which much to my surprise has been very, very popular. But um, I've done another video on the privatization of water. And in the idea of privatizing water, this is exactly the problem. Corporation comes up, comes in, says we'll clean up the water. Insofar as they've cleaned the water, they've distilled it, they've purified it, they now believe that they own the water and can bill um, individuals for access to the water. How does cleaning the water give you the right to say that the water is now yours? Right? It's, it's profoundly ridiculous, right? 
Um, so Nozick's challenge to lack is exactly rooted in this type of discussion. The reason why I wanted to um, take a little bit of time just to discuss the, the sort of the, the, uh, the background information regarding Freire's uh, discussion of the, uh, the oppressed is that the oppressed function in this Lackian sense, which is not to demonize Lack's account in any regard, but there are problems. And this specific aspect of uh, Locke's account of ownership and private property complicates the discussion because the oppressed, the oppressors believe that they have the right, and that right is an inalienable right to have. And once I have that right to have, then I want more and more and more and more and more, right? So that my life is spent doing nothing other than consuming, taking for myself. Okay. Um, the next point. The dehumanization of those who do not have, and this is what I said I would get to, um, what we end up having is a dehumanization of individuals who don't have, right? If there is the view that there are objects in the world, and that these objects are waiting to be possessed, and you have the oppressor, and you have OPPR, you have the oppressor, and you have the oppressed. If the acquisition of this, um, if the acquisition of this object in the world um, requires sort of intellectual acumen, you, a certain amount of uh, learning, right, a certain amount of education, a certain amount of, um, of, 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 of pedagogy, what I'm doing right now, what this whole thing's about, then insofar as I've received that education, right, perfect example. Let me let me explain something. Uh, imagine that you want to be, imagine that you want to be the next. Um, billionaire Silicon Valley um, uh, innovator. You want to create the, new, the newest social network platform or you want to create the newest internet thing, right? Um, and we have an oppressor and an oppressed group. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually laughable to think that an oppressed group could have access in the Fourierian sense to this ability, but imagine that we both want to possess, we both want to have this, this thing in the world, right? This, this new internet startup company. In order to get access um, to creating this thing, to having this thing, to possessing this thing, to owning this thing, there's a lot of education that one requires. You have to learn all types of coding, you gotta learn Java, you gotta learn this, you gotta learn that, you gotta learn all of this. If the oppressor class has access to that knowledge, the oppressor is gonna be able to have, to possess that, right? Because now I can put in the work, I can uh, go about creating the, the code and the foundation to build this, this new technology. If the oppressed class doesn't have access to the knowledge, if they aren't educated, if there is no pedagogy, right, if there's no means of educating those who do not have financial resources to pay for their education, well, they're gonna be disenfranchised, right? And that's the truth behind it. What Freire says is that the oppressor doesn't look at this act of this inability to possess as a disenfranchisement, right? What happens is that the oppressor looks at the oppressed as being lazy. The reason why you didn't do it is that you're lazy. The reason that you didn't do it is that you're, you're what are some of the other things? That you're incompetent, right? You don't have an understanding or you don't have the work ethic, which is phenomenally false, right? The reason why the oppressed group um, weren't able to create this new technology is that the creation of this, and this is just an example, but the creation of this new technology itself requires a very, very advanced skill set, right? A pedagogical skill set. You have to be taught this. Insofar as you're taught this, insofar as you had access to this information, then more possibilities are open to you. The whole reason that I'm doing this, right? The whole reason that there are almost 300 videos up and I don't know, like nine, nine days worth of, of, of lectures, I don't know how many hours worth of lectures up, is because I recognize that there aren't individuals that have access to higher education. You can't afford it. I'm a high a higher educator. Why would I charge you? Why you know I can open up my own private practice and you know to only the elite and I can sit down with their elite children and tell them about Paulo for years, pedagogy of the oppressed, and give them all types of insight that I wouldn't give to anyone else because I'm doing it from my own private benefit. But then I'm I'm this is what I'm doing. I recognize that there are people that don't have access to knowledge, right, pedagogically, don't have access, and their possibilities are limited. So insofar as you're watching this, you have a possibility now, right? Now I can engage in conversation with, I can engage, uh, Joe on the street, 
regular person on the street can engage in a very, very, very advanced, uh, very, very complex. This is not a watered down discussion of Apollo Freer. This is more. This is more complex than any lecture I would give in class because there's no limitation on my time. I can spend as much time on this as possible as I want. Right? If you are taking the time to go through and watch all, I'm not saying just this video, but anything. If you're taking the time to seek out and uh, get education and to do it for free, now you can compete. Right? Now you can see where there's competition. And that's exactly what the oppressors do not want. They don't want you to acquire the pedagogy, the know-how, because if you acquire the know-how, then they're competing. You're competing with them over this thing. What I'm doing right now, if I'm doing it right, is giving you the know-how. Right? The fact that there should be, there ought to be, and I shouldn't be the only person on YouTube doing it. There should be more academics, there should be more professors on YouTube, whatever their specializations are, giving their information to, um, to students that will never have an opportunity to gain access to this information. If you're curious, if you have the desire to know, you should have an ability to know and one of the greatest, one of the greatest uh, contributions that the internet has is that it gives me an opportunity to give others who would never have an opportunity, who couldn't afford to sit in one of my classes, an opportunity to be educated. Um, and that's the that's the um, that's the goal. That's the point. At least for me, it is right.